Next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk to you guys about the importance of kata. And you guys know I'm huge into preserving history and tradition. And what the problem um, with people who throw kata and they take it and then they throw it away, they don't understand the word transmission. And the word transmission, when something gets passed on from one generation to the next generation to the next generation, um, you transmit that and there's something that goes along with it, right? So let's say that we're going to look, on, look at kata, whatever kata is, kata number one, right? So you're doing a particular technique and whatever that particular technique is, and you do this technique, and then you've done it because it was done before you and it was done before them and it's been passed on for hundreds of years. Sword techniques, stick techniques, right? That sort of thing. The one thing that enabled this, what makes martial arts transmission so unique and so beautiful compared to other forms of transmission is that the physical form is the transmission. It's not so much the teaching. The, the form itself, you learn a mechanical movement. There's something to that. There's a feeling. There's a movement. There's an understanding. If I just said I'm gonna, we're going to pass down the knowledge of how to do kata number one, and it's only thrown word of mouth. We call that kudin. Right? So, and it's only through word of mouth, the application would be lost. The truth would be lost. The essence would be lost because people won't remember the physical form. That's why the, the kata is so important because it transcends time. The kata was designed to teach people. Remember I talked to you guys about, earlier we talked about strategies and techniques. Uh, so when you have strategies and, and techniques or strategies and tactics, whichever, whatever word you want to use, principles, techniques, strategy, tactics, or whatnot, but the physical techniques, the physical tactics, those do change depending on the situation, depending on the time, things evolve. The philosophies and the strategies and the principles don't. And the kata, if you think of it as a principle, what is the principle of the kata? What are the essence of the kata? What is it teaching you? Do you follow me? Yeah. And that principle and that strategy, and that's why it's so beautiful, because it, those don't change. And everyone looks at an old kata, and they say, well, that kata wouldn't work today. Okay, well, there are kata, and there are techniques. And everyone, I think, people who are not good at martial arts, people who, you know that we've talked, I made these videos about don't be a martial arts joke, don't be, one, don't be the first Don master, you know those fucking people that are like, I got a first degree in Taekwondo and a first degree here, and they're not masters, but they claim to be. Well, those people saturate the martial arts community. People who don't aren't dedicated to any one thing. They've never really learned the martial arts. So these kind of teachers who saturate the arts, and they're, they fit in that category, they just they skip, jump to different martial arts and different stuff, and they just feel like that's good for them. They don't understand there's a difference between kata and waza. There's a difference between the, the strategies and the tactics. There's a difference between the form and the function. And they don't understand that. They think that everything you do has to have some form of physical application. Not everything has to have physical application. Some things you're just supposed to know. You're supposed to learn. You're supposed to understand. Is there a physical application for me to look at you and say, best defenses don't be there? No. Is there a physical application for me to say, Hey, you know, don't be stupid. Situational awareness, perception, plan, uh, you know, process, all these different aspects of situational awareness. No. You know what I mean? There can be, but there don't necessarily have to be. And people miscue what kata is. Kata has so many lessons wrapped up in one, and it teaches so many things that that's why it's so important that they go and they be passed down through time. So you can learn not just the physical movement, but why we do the physical movement against a physical attack, and then you get that tactile feeling of this is why it works, this is how it works, this is when it works. And then you understand the strategy behind that. Well, really what I'm doing, it isn't really the outward block and strike that I'm doing, or the outward block, counter grab, and the kick that I'm doing. It really is, okay, when they come in with a knife, I need to shield myself. I need to shield the vital areas. And then get into a Jomanji no Kamai. And then from there I can do my uke waza, or, or blocking, or deflecting techniques to then get into the point where I can commit and move in and then finish the technique. Because the kata itself, maybe you have a kata where like this, and then you move in like this, and then it's here, and then you're moving in, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, that really wouldn't work. Well, it does work if you know what the hell it is that you're doing. You know what I mean? So don't ever think that the kata don't work. Don't be one of those jackasses that think like that. You know what I mean? The martial arts community is saturated with dumbasses. Don't be a dumbass. This is what I'm saying, right? 
He's, you know, you got, you know, Bob, and oh, I have a first degree in this and a first degree in that, and I made my own art, and it's called, you know, best shit dough. Well, okay. Don't. Shit's still shit, even if you put best in front of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, just don't be a dumbass. There's a reason for everything. And the people that designed it, they did it for a reason.